Check out this video as I chat with Art Commissioner Branka Juknich. Hi Branka, how are you? Hi Marcus, I'm doing well, how are you doing? I'm good. So why do we start with you telling us like what do you do professionally? Okay, so um, I am the executive director of a nonprofit organization. It's a cultural organization called Queen's Historical Society. And we're located in a historic house museum that's about 250 years old in downtown Flushing in a place called Weeping Beach Park, which is just, let's say, about five minutes walk from the Flushing Main Street uh, subway stop. And um, our museum does a lot of things that it tries to sort of showcase every aspect of Queen's history and highlight its multicultural cultural ways. Uh, and uh, through lectures, through walking tours, uh, through youth and children programs, uh, we try to sort of talk about anything that happened in the very distant past from Native American uh, uh, history uh, when Native American communities lived sort of freely in this country all the way to colonial times and contemporary past. We try to sort of highlight any socioeconomic changes that um, happened in our borough. That's so, great. Uh, yeah, yeah. How did you get involved with the museum? Oh, so um, uh, my, my trade is in archaeology and mm -hmm. uh, I've been teaching at um, CUNY uh, in CUNY schools, uh, Brooklyn College and City College of New York for a while, and I decided to sort of venture out of the, the academic world and uh, start working with sort of hands-on with, with the communities and to develop programs that way, and I just wanted to sort of experience um, Queens. I was living in Flushing, and I, I uh, sort of uh, applied for this sort of administrator job, but it's way more satisfying than and anything that I anticipated. And um, just working with, you know, children and youth and, and seniors in, in uh, the communities of Flushing and beyond. I mean, every part of, uh, every neighborhood of Queens is, is such a satisfying sort of position to be in. So is that why you want to be an art commissioner for Flushing? Yes. Uh, one of the things was to sort of understand uh, maybe aspects of, uh, of art or to try to find more and highlight local local artists that maybe didn't get a chance to get a, a break out there, whatever that break means, um, and to see how our organization can grow. Because we've been seen as this sort of old school uh, historical society just filled with people who just want to talk about the good old, let's say, colonial times or the good old, um, you know, 18th, 19th century. But what I want to make out of this specific museum is to sort of make it into a community hub that attracts you know um, not only teaching artists uh, that work in our specific workshops and classes but also uh, local young um, and you know exciting and interesting people that that can bring something new to the table and just give us sort of a hint of what what maybe we're missing maybe we, we're missing some parts of uniqueness of queens and uniqueness of flushing that we haven't highlighted before so we're researchers and as a researcher i think this is like the best place to start with nice so how did you i don't know how does the application process work like for like an art commissioner um so what it was for me uh i was sort of um I was approached by uh, one of the uh, directors at the Queen's Tourism Council, uh, Rob Mackay, who suggested to speak to uh, Kelly um, Olshin. Um, she, she and I were talking a couple of times and she was sort of just highlighting, you know, the, the best things about being an art commissioner. And she did, did a really good job in, in um, trying to explain how democratic this process is and how uh, Queen's Council on the Arts is doing this really exciting thing that I don't think anyone in US has done before, at least in the East Coast, where you get to ask people who are not artists themselves or that haven't had experience in art commissioning before and just bring their knowledge and their background to the table. And um, the process went really quickly. I, uh, I applied online and then I had an interview with Kelly. And after that, I got a notice that I'm part of the Flushing group. Um, 
And after that, we've had a few meetings with the Ridgewood and Maspeth group as well. So um, it was it was a really, really exciting uh, group of people to meet. It's like a completely new experience. I've known some of them, some of the Flushing commissioners before, just because we were co-workers and, and friends, but um, just learning about all of you, uh, the artists and the commissioners, and, and just meeting you and, and seeing all these perspectives was an exciting, exciting thing to do. That's great. For the process, when it comes to like picking the artists, uh, what, do you have any insight as to like what that process was like for you and what kind of projects really stood out for you? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say that it was, it was an intense process. It, I thought that it would be just obviously a very fun, very friendly uh, set of get togethers between friends, but at the same time, there was a fun aspect to it, but there was a, a lot of hard work put into it. And for me, doing this for the first time, it was, a, I felt a lot of guilt, to be honest, because there were so many talented applications and so many talented people um, and teams of people that applied that it was, it was a sort of a hard experience to, and I was, you know, sharing it freely with my family members too, saying like, I feel like I want to elect everyone. I feel like I want to choose everyone. And I'm, I was in, at the same time, I was grateful that there were so many other uh, art commissioners that were to try to, trying to sort of help us all. And of course, with Kelly being the, the manager to sort of filter through all of our uh, additional questions or doubts or, or guilt or any, any sort of questions we had uh, through this sort of intensive process of meeting on a, I think it was like a bi-weekly basis that we met uh, in the beginning, uh, that culminated in the very uh, last sort of full-blown day of a selection process where we um, selected, um, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, about 10 applications or 10 to 15 applications and we had to narrow down to two. That was the hardest part for me, <laughs> just narrowing down. And there was a lot of discussion and sort of friendly arguments between everyone trying to see why and how everybody was, was so important. But um, the happy thing at the end of it all is that all of us selected you uh, and Jamie, and that was, it was a, it was a unified decision. Not, no one was sort of, having an issue or no one had their own favorite that they wanted to highlight it was just the two of you guys and it was it was an actual beautiful moment i didn't expect that to be honest i thought it was <laughs> going to be like a lot of like <laughs> crazy fighting like no and like getting out from the table like i don't want to talk to you guys no it was it was just great um there were some aspects to it that you know uh, were difficult for me because there was um, an actual uh, group of artists, actually two artists that applied for this process, for yeah. this application, and I knew them and we were collaborating with them and I just had to step away. This was, you know, I didn't know how to, I don't, I don't think I would have been an objective commissioner if I stayed and listened and voted on it. So um, it happened to me and I think two more commissioners had to step out when the selection process was happening, I just said, okay, just call me when you guys are finished voting uh, okay. and then I'll come back again. So um, I think that was, that was fair to do. Um, yeah, do you have any advice to like potential applicants in the future? Uh, something that maybe could help them create a good application? Yeah, what I would suggest is just be, again, create this perfect context, uh, whether it's, your own family background, depending on the project, um, your art background, not just like a, a resume or a CV, and be as as concise as you can in your initial synopsis. So in the in the very first set of meetings we had, we would just read anonymous um, um, uh, narratives and synopses, uh, and just based on these like one or two paragraphs, we would. Uh, remove or you know or or vote up a specific applicant and again we didn't know none of any of the names or any of the backgrounds and some of them weren't as I know it's hard it's hard if you have only 150 words <laughs> to to you know to shine for those few moments that we read your application but I think that's like the first thing like just being very 
focused on your 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 cover story, whether it's like a paragraph or two paragraphs. And then the second advice I would have would be to showcase as many videos as you can or any audio samples as you can, whatever is in your financial, <laughs> you know, uh, capital capabilities, uh, any simple thing would do just to sort of give us sort of your story of your previous art, anything that you've produced before. And of course, if you're, if you want to portray, portray a specific story to us, try to be as, as detailed as possible of where are you coming from? And, and again, this sort of, I would call it a historical context of why you're doing this and why this is important. As an example, um, there was, um, I, I don't remember the name of the artist, but um, it was a Brazilian group highlighting a traditional Brazilian dance. And then I was the only uh, commissioner that was familiar with this specific dance. The rest of the commissioners were just, they, the applicant lacked in explanations of why they see this specific traditional dance as important to the communities of Flushing. And B, what is it about? You can't just film the dance without giving us a, a specific context of, you know, and, and history of that, the relevance of that specific dance. Um, so, you know, there were a lot of aspects to that that I think uh, an artist applicant has to contribute, which is, give good context and write as detailed as possible and try to explain it to us. Uh, think of us as people who have never heard of uh, anything that you've done before or never heard of uh, your ethnic background or any of the cultural stories that you bring to the table. Think of us as Martians that have landed here <laughs> and, and, and are like absolutely oblivious or I lived in a, in a strange convent somewhere far away on the top of a mountain and I'm coming down and I, I need to know who you are and I'm hearing, I, I'm, you know, I don't have a computer. Think of it that way, you know, I'm not that's, connected yeah. to this. Yeah, that's really world. great advice. Really, really great advice. Um, so do you feel also like as an immigrant that your stories yeah. are represented here in the United States in the mainstream? Um, not really, no. There were, my ethnicity, which is I'm originally from Serbia, from Belgrade, which is the capital of Serbia, we have always been portrayed in a sort of fairly negative way just by looking at all the sort of problematic things that have happened in the past 15, 20 years in our, uh, in our region. Uh, but there's so many more things to highlight. And then I believe that there's always um, more to be done and there's always more projects to be done to highlight us. And I think. Queens generally as a county, not just Flushing or Maspeth or Ridgewood, but uh, Queens as a county is so such a beautiful sort of breeding ground for, for art that, you know, I feel like uh, uh, an artist uh, can always find some inspiration just, just by looking at, at neighborhoods or their own backyards, their own neighbors, you know, and it doesn't matter if it's dance or, or screenplay or, or any musical composition. So yeah, I, I believe that, you know, we haven't been represented, but uh, there is still some hope to do that. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and I will see you soon.